Hello biologists, we're going to do lab 3.18 today, the first part of 3.18. Um, and it's important that we're learning this because we're wanting to be able to chemically compare what happens in photosynthesis with cellular respiration. So we're going to understand a little bit more of the chemistry of photosynthesis today by looking at this particular uh, simulation in Concord Consortium. If you can't download it, that's okay. You'll see enough in this video to get the lab done. So let's go look at the simulation and figure out these first couple questions. What color of light has the highest frequency? We'll look at the simulation here. And which photon has the lowest amount of energy? So when you boot up the simulation, it'll look like this. We want to start on page one. What is sunlight? All living organisms use energy from the sun either directly, like plants, or when plants use sunlight to make their own food, or indirectly as when animals eat plants. That's us. We use sunlight indirectly by eating plants or animals that eat plants. The sun bathes the earth in a steady stream of light, some of which we can see and some of which we can't see. In this activity, we'll explore how certain molecules in plant cells capture light energy so plants can use it in photosynthesis. Our main question here is we're trying to figure out the sun delivers a huge amount of energy to the earth through sunlight. What is sunlight and how does it carry energy? Energy that we eventually use. Sunlight consists of photons with different energies. Sunlight consists of tiny packets of energy called photons. They have no mass or charge. Frequency of a photon is its most important characteristic. The higher the frequency of a photon, the more energy it carries. So we're looking for the high frequency photons here to answer question one in the lab. Wavy lines represent photons in our models with an arrow pointing in the direction they travel. The more wiggles or squiggles, the higher the frequency. See here. This has more squiggles, the high frequency photon here, than the low frequency photon. Some photons belong to the visible part of the sun's radiation, and some are invisible, such as photons of infrared or ultraviolet radiation. Sunlight is a mixture of photons with all frequencies, therefore it is white. The image below shows a part of the light spectrum around the visible zone. So here are the colors we're all familiar with. And sunlight is all of these colors. You'll need that for later in the lab. So let's run this model here and watch the sun shine. You can see that the sun is radiating down all kinds of different colors of photons. And it's our job here, what color of light has the highest frequency? So which color here do you think has the most squiggles? I'll let you pick, figure that out. Is it red, yellow, green, or blue? Which photon has the lowest amount of energy? So remember, in order to figure that out, low frequency equals low energy. So we're looking for uh, fewer squiggles to figure out which has the least energy. So you can figure out which photon has the lowest amount of energy. I'll pause this so you can look and figure out which of those uh, photons might have the least energy. Now we've answered one and two, so now we need to pay attention to questions three, four, and five. We're going to go to page two in the simulation and look at pigments. The pigment in the upper left-hand corner of page two reflects blue light but absorbs red and green. We have to figure out what color that pigment is. It'll be pretty obvious. Based on the model, which of the following must be true? We have to figure out which photons are absorbed by a red and a green leaf. And in the simulation, we want to know what happens if we put a plant in a dark room and only shine green light on it. Uh, answering this question will also help you in part three of the lab. So we'll go to page two in the simulation. 
And now the question that we're trying to answer here is different colored leaves absorb, reflect, and transmit different photons. Is the light that a leaf absorbs the same color as the leaf? So let's figure that out. This pigment absorbs red and green light, but reflects blue. What color is it? So what color is this pigment here? The red and the green light are being absorbed by the pigment, and the blue light is bouncing off. I will, I will read the first paragraph and let you read the second paragraph. You can pause. A leaf has a color because of the pigments in it. A pigment is a molecule that absorbs photons of visible light of certain frequencies, letting others reach our eyes unchanged. On the left is an example of a pigment with light of different colors shining on it. The pigment absorbs the photons of red and green light and reflects the blue light. Plants have pigments that make their leaves look green. We're trying to figure out what photons do leaves absorb. So we're going to look at the simulation right here. You can see that the red photons are getting absorbed by this leaf and they bounce off this leaf. This would be like a leaf in the fall. Let's see what happens when we use green photons. We'll use a green filter here. So what's happening to the green photons here? Are they being absorbed by this leaf or are they bouncing off? Same here, what is happening with the red leaf? Are the green photons being absorbed? Do they just disappear or do they bounce back off? Now let's go to blue light. What's happening to the blue light in both of the leaves? I'll let you think, I'll let you watch for a second and think. Okay, let's answer the questions down here. We've already answered question three in the lab. Let's work on four and five. Based on the model, which of the following must be true? The red leaf absorbs red photons. The green leaf absorbs green photons. Okay, we'll go back and we'll put the green photons on. Just to let you think about that. We'll put the red photons back on. To let you think about that. The red leaf absorbs any photons of any color but red. The green leaf absorbs photons of any color but green. Figure out which ones are correct based on what you saw in this model. Based on this model, what will happen if we put a plant in a dark room and only shine green light on it? So no other light would hit this green plant except a green. Explain what would happen. We just answered question three, four, and five based on the model we saw on page two. Now we're going to go on to question six, seven, eight uh, on page three. What were scientists in the 1940s trying to discover when they crushed leaves isolated molecules and beamed light through them. Based on your observations of the above model, which molecule is responsible for absorbing light in the leaf? And we'll look at a model of three different molecules and we'll try to figure this out. Then we can click on whole leaf in the model and describe three different ways in which photons interact with the leaves. So let's go to the simulation. So, you can see we're on page three. Our main question here is what molecules in a leaf absorb and pass along the energy of photons? Finding what molecules absorb light. Scientists in the 1940s set out to discover which molecules in leaves allow a plant to capture light energy. They crushed leaves, isolated the different molecules, and beamed the light through each of them. Then they compared the results to shining light through the whole leaf. In the model below, you will try to do the same thing. You'll send light through different molecules known to be present in a plant cell to determine which one is able to absorb visible light. You will also see what kind of light these molecules absorb. So we just figured out an answer to question six.
we have separate suppose we have separated a leaf into three substances each of which is known composed of one type of molecule let's call them molecule a b and c our task is to figure out which molecule is responsible for absorbing light let's run the model select model a b and c and observe light absorption for each substance so first of all let's look at the whole leaf So it seems to me a lot of light is getting absorbed here. That green light wasn't absorbed, that green photon bounced off. But a lot of the other photons are getting absorbed. Okay, let's look at some molecules isolated from these leaves. So it looks like most of the photons are bouncing off or bouncing around. And then eventually, they seem to be making their way out of those molecules. All right, let's look at molecule B. What happens when photons of light hit that molecule? Looks like a lot of the first ones here are bouncing off, or bouncing around and bouncing through, but not being absorbed. Okay, let's look at molecule C. Ooh, that one happens to be green, look at that. It's absorbing lots of different photons of different wavelengths. Purple, yellow, red. Nope, yellow didn't get absorbed there, blue did. Infrared, ultraviolet. Looks like molecule C is absorbing most of the photons. I'll stop it here. So let's look at this question. Based on your observations of the above model, which molecule is responsible for absorbing light in the leaf? Molecule A, B, or C, or cannot determine? I'll let you figure that out based on what you saw in this model above. Now let's click the whole leaf button and describe three different ways in which the photons interact with the leaves. So I'll click whole leaf and let it run. So some of those photons look like they're being absorbed. That's one way to interact, absorption. It looks like green passes through the leaf, or at least these those green photons did. They didn't get bounced off, but they didn't get absorbed. Well, and that green photon just got reflected, so it didn't get absorbed. So yellow gets absorbed, ultraviolet gets absorbed, infrared gets absorbed. And then along comes a photon that gets reflected. And sometimes they just bounce around inside the leaf and go right through. So they get transmitted or they pass through the leaf. So there you've got three ways. They get absorbed, they get reflected, or they get transmitted. They pass through the leaf without being absorbed, which is different than being reflected. Now we've answered questions six, seven, and eight. Now we're gonna go back to page three and look at question nine and 10. Look at the chlorophyll molecule which absorbs light within the plants, within the chloroplast. So I've scrolled down on page three, and right now we're looking at a 3D structure of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the green pigment in chloroplast. Remember, chloroplasts are the organelle 
in plants that uh, help the plant absorb light energy. Let's look at the hydrocarbon tail. You notice the hydrocarbon tail just has carbon and hydrogen. It's very similar to the tail of a membrane lipid. Both are made entirely of hydrogen and carbon. So this is something to consider when we get down to this question right here. Let's look at the light catching head. So this is the part of the chlor chlorophyll molecule that actually captures photons. The magnesium atom at the center of the head is important in determining the color of light that is absorbed by the chlorophyll. So this right here is a magnesium atom. That's why it's colored bright green. And that's a hint. Chlorophyll is bright green. So magnesium helps make chlorophyll bright green. Let's scroll down and look at some of the questions here. In the cell, chlorophyll binds to other molecules in a large complex. Based on the structure of chlorophyll's tail, which of the following would chlorophyll associate with? Well, let's go back to chlorophyll's tail here. You can see chlorophyll's tail is very similar to the tail of a membrane lipid. Remember, lipids are hydrophobic. So I just gave you two hints here, and remember, it says check all that apply. All right, let's go to this question here about heme. Heme is a functional group similar to chlorophyll's head, but it has iron in place of magnesium. Heme is what makes blood look red. It's also what uh, helps blood absorb oxygen in red blood cells, which we studied in the last lab. What colors of light does iron help heme absorb? So if it looks red, what colors is it absorbing? Let's explain our answer. Let's see their hint. Let's also go to another part of the simulation where they'll give you a giant hint about pigments. So remember, hemoglobin is red. Um, and the color of a pigment is the color of light it reflects. So this blue pigment here reflects blue light and absorbs everything else. So if this pigment was red, what would be reflected and what would be absorbed? That's the answer for heme, the red in red blood cells. So we just talked about number 11 which is comparing the photosystem of chlorophyll, which looks green because of the magnesium atom, to the part of heme, which has an iron atom, which looks red. And iron makes lots of things look red. Here you know that the soil in the iron range looks reddish because it has a lot of iron in it. Um, so iron makes a lot of things look red. So, Question 12, 13, and 14 are going to be answered on page 4, which we'll go to right now. So I'm on page 4. We're going to answer the question, how does chlorophyll transfer energy to other molecules? Chlorophyll is a part of a complex of molecules in the chloroplast. Chlorophyll is packed in the chlor chlor chloroplast, organelles inside plant cells, where photosynthesis takes place. A chloroplast serves as a chemical factory that has many light harvesting machines known as photosystems for absorbing photons from sunlight. The length of the largest chloroplast is nearly as large as the radius of the thinnest human hair, 10 micrometers. The size of a photosystem is much smaller, about a few thousandths of a chloroplast. So there's your answer about size. Chlorophyll gathers lots of light energy and passes it along in a chain of many molecules that use it to make sugar and release oxygen in the process. Let's explore a light harvesting system. Pigment molecules as chlorophyll have special structures that enable them to absorb a photon of light. To absorb enough light for a plant to grow, many pigment molecules are needed. 
In chloroplasts, these pigments are embedded in islands of protein called light harvesting complexes, which are in turn part of the photosystem inside the chloroplasts. Let's watch the movie. So here's a single chlorophyll molecule. Its tail is curled around and its hydrogen atoms are not shown. But a single chlorophyll cannot capture enough light. So inside chloroplasts, many chlorophylls are packed together. Lots and lots of chlorophylls. That's why plants look green, because this is a green pigment and it reflects green light, so our eyes see green. But chlorophyll alone only captures some photons. What about the other pigments? The other pigments, such as carotenoids, lutenes, which are yellow, you need to remember lutenes, and neoxanthins. Gathering light is only half the battle. You must pass along the energy to proteins. Proteins are packed into the complex, partly to give it shape, but also to absorb some of the energy. Many islands are list embedded in the membrane inside chloroplasts. So all of this is a photosystem inside the chloroplasts. Only the membrane surrounding one island is shown here. So this is one of many photosystem islands within the chloroplast. Lots and lots of these are in every chloroplast. So let's watch this movie again because you're need, going to need to pay attention to the the pigments that are not green, pigments other than chlorophyll that absorb other photons that are green and <clears throat> other photons that chlorophyll doesn't do a good job of absorbing. So here's the chlorophyll molecule. It can't capture much light. It needs lots of friends to work with it in a photosystem. And then many photosystems are in the chloroplast. Now pay attention to the other pigments besides chlorophyll that help absorb other colors. So the other pigments are carotenoids, there's also in carrots, lutenes, which are also in eggs, and neoxanthins. The energy must be passed along to proteins, so you add proteins to the photosystem. They give it structure, they absorb some energy, and then you put that whole thing in the membrane of the chloroplast. And remember, there are lots and lots of these in every chloroplast. So let's look at the questions now. How do additional pigments help chlorophyll to transfer energy for photosynthesis? Chlorophyll transfers electrons to them. They transfer photons to proteins. They absorb photons of other frequencies. Remember, chlorophyll bounces green off because it's a green pigment. So it needs friends. It needs other pigments to help it out. They absorb electrons from proteins. Let's see if we were right here. We're correct. Oh, yay. Compared to the other pigments, there is so much chlorophyll in the leaves that they appear green. In the autumn, pigments start to break down. How can you explain the other colors in autumn leaves? We'll give you a hint. In the fall, chlorophyll breaks down and doesn't show up anymore. So what do we see? We see some of these other carotenoids, lutenes, and neoxanthins that give fall leaves their colors. They were always there all summer. We just didn't see them because there was so much chlorophyll covering them up. So this is a tough question. Uh, the ACT throws crazy questions at you with different uh, information that you may have learned, and then you have to kind of combine different information to figure things out uh, on the ACT science test. So I will do the same, throw crazy questions at you and kind of help you work through um, sorting through all the different information. Free range chickens eat grass. They're out running around eating bugs and grass. As a result, their skin and eggs turn a bright yellow. If you buy a uh, honest-to-goodness free-range chicken that's actually spent most of its life outside, you'll notice that the skin, before you cook them, is very yellow, almost green, in certain places where their fat is. Where does the color come from? Well, it comes from the plants that they're eating. Watch the movie where we saw all those different pigments besides chlorophyll. 
And here's hint number two. The same chemical gives the macula lutea in your eye its color. And that's a big hint, lutea. Which one, which other pigment do you think it is? You can go back, rewind, and watch the movie again if you need to. So we're going to go on to page five and watch a model of chlorophyll at work and look for what colors of light cause the electron to rise the most energy levels on the green bar. I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. And then that determines the frequencies of photons a pigment molecule might absorb. We'll look at what that is. And then we'll try to produce a blue pigment. So we're going to do a little chemistry here. Take a deep breath. You're going to be fine. We're harvesting light for photosynthesis. How does chlorophyll work? Our big question on this page is what determines the frequencies of the photons a pigment molecule absorbs? Remember, there's about four different pigments that we're exploring right now, and we have to understand how those pigments work. In order to understand how chlorophyll works, it helps to know what happens when a molecule is excited. When a pigment molecule absorbs a photon, remember those little packets of light we talked about in the first page? One of the molecule's electrons gains energy. This electron jumps from a lower energy state to a higher energy state. So here's the ground state, the electrons are hanging out. And if it absorbs some energy from a photon, it jumps up to a more excited state or a really excited state. Scientists call this process photoexcitation. The difference between the lower energy and higher one is equal to the energy the absorbed photon carries. So this, whether it jumps this much or this much, is dependent on the photon that it absorbs, the color of the photon. If the photon's energy is not equal to the energy difference between any two energy levels in the molecule, then the photon cannot be absorbed. Instead, it will bounce back or pass through. The energy levels of the molecule are determined by its chemical composition and the arrangement of its atoms. Therefore, each type of molecule has its own unique distribution of energy levels. Let's look at chlorophyll at work. The following model shows how chlorophyll works. Only part of the chlorophyll shown, the light gathering head. To the right of the model is an energy diagram of chlorophyll. The little white circle is a diagram representing an electron. Now this is not a perfect representation. That's what the note says. The large green ball in the model represents the magnesium atom of the chlorophyll. Let's start the simulation and carefully observe what happens in both the model and the energy level diagrams on the right. So let's hit play here. So a molecule or a photon of energy is absorbed or bounces off. But when it's absorbed, you can see the electron bounce up. And as different kinds of photons are absorbed, it bounces up different amounts. So green isn't absorbed. There's yellow, it goes up to about here. Wow, ultraviolet went all the way up there. Blue went up out here. Infrared went about here. Red went all the way up here. Ultraviolet went right here, oh, right there. So you can see that different photons cause different amounts of energy to be added to the electron. So now we have a challenge. We have to design a pigment. We're a scientist who wants to design an artificial photosynthetic system. So kind of like using a photosynthesis like a solar cell. Let's assume that you design your design goal is a blue pigment. The model below shows a molecule that absorbs all frequencies of photons. Your task is to modify the energy level diagram so that it will absorb photons of any color but blue. In other words, we want it to reflect blue light. So what, what energy 
levels of the pigment do we take out to get it to reflect blue light? So where does the blue light bounce up to? Let's look. So here's blue. Let's take this one out. Here's another blue one. Oh, that got reflected. Good. There's another blue one. Oh, not sure where that one went. Let's. Oh, looks like it, that one needs to be taken out. Oh, looks like that one needs to be taken out. That was sort of blue, so maybe let's take that out. Let's take this one out. Well, blue just got reflected. Let's take that one out too. Okay, so oh, looks like blue's bouncing off now, so it looks like we've done a good job. So what do we need to do in order to produce a blue pigment? Basically, we needed to get all the blue light to bounce off. So we needed to remove the energy levels to which blue photons made the electron rise to. Remember, if the, um, there's not an energy level that sort of fits the photon, then the light will be reflected by the photosystem. So we took out all the energy levels that kind of fit where the blue photon would go. And so since that color photon, that wavelength doesn't work for this, for our color pigment, then it gets reflected. The energy levels are wrong. We took out the energy levels that worked for blue. So we just <clears throat> answered 16, 17, 18, and 19. 20, we need to look at this diagram. What color is least effective in causing photosynthesis? Why? Notice this is where light is being absorbed by, there's uh, a molecule called chlorophyll A. Chlorophyll B absorbs in this range. It doesn't look like either of one absorbs in this range, but they do absorb in yellow and orange. So, um, think about this and come up with an answer. Make sure you explain why, because it's worth two points. This will also be helpful in part three of the lab. If a substance is blue, then what is true about the photons it absorbs? Think about that. What we just did with the blue pigment. So now we're going on to page six, our last page. Through photosynthesis, plants convert energy of sunlight to chemical energy stored in plants. In this activity, you explored how certain molecules, the pigments, interact with light and determine the color of plants. Each time a pigment molecule, such as chlorophyll, interacts with light, one of the pigment's electrons gains, a gains energy and is raised from a low energy state to a high energy state. However, the energy of the light photon must be equal to the difference of energy levels found in the molecule or it's reflected. This light-matter interaction begins the process of photosynthesis. We just talked about that, and there's a diagram on your sheet that helps you answer this question. If a substance is blue, then what is true about the photons it absorbs? Well, remember back on page two, we saw a blue pigment that was reflecting blue light and absorbing. You can think about that. Water tends to absorb more red photons than blue ones. Red algae are known are the known photosynthetic organisms that live deepest in the sea, as deep as 600 feet. Why do they have a red color when we observe them under sunlight? Well, what's the pigment there? 
And what is the pigment doing? Which of the following must be true about the photon absorption and energy level of pigments? The energy of an absorbed photon must be equal to the difference of energy between the two energy levels. The higher the energy levels are, the higher the energy of the photons a pigment will absorb. The energy levels of a pigment become higher when a photon is absorbed. Well, remember we talked about how the energy levels of a photon have to match the jump, the increase in energy levels of the photon of that particular pigment. That's why when we wanted to make a blue pigment, we selectively took out the energy levels where a blue photon would jump to. So I'll let you think about which answer might be correct here. So last question, Indian pipe plants, you can see this image and there's also an image on your worksheet, contain no chlorophyll. What can you conclude about the in ability of the Indian pipe plant to make its own food? Well, if it doesn't have chlorophyll or other pigments like red or yellow, can it absorb any of the light to capture that energy of light to make its own food? I'll let you think about that. So this is the end of part one of the lab. The next video will do part two together, cellular respiration.